What's up guys? It's me, GameGab. Welcome back to my channel. This time, we're going to discuss my Warlock PvP build. Let's go! Disclaimer, I'm going to skip the PvE. This is a glass cannon build and you really need to have a good positioning in order for you to unleash your full burst combos. My playstyle is I need to identify and burst down key targets such as Archbishops, Warlocks, and Rune Knights. Since Warlocks is one of the best DPS class in the game, it can potentially burst down any classes in the current meta. Considering you have the same PvP stats, titles, and your power gap is not that far. Since this is a PvP build and a working progress, it's up to you guys if you want to copy my build. To start things off, I'm going to show you my stats. For my stats, I distributed it to Vit 99, which gives me max HP, Int 99, which gives me MATK, 63 on Dex, which gives me negative 100% variable CT and the rest is on the lock which is 37 it gives me additional 0 0.3 for each lock points now for the details for the substats I have 221k HP 8.1k on the MATK 5.8k on the SP 3k on the PDEF and 986 on the MDEF for the quasi stats for the PVP ward I already have 405k PvP ward, negative 100 variable CT. I also have the M damage 182.95%. The P damage reduction is 155.42%. M damage reduction is 167.45. And the ignore M death is 1000. For the PvP damage reduction, I have 4.7k. And for the PvP damage bonus, is I have 4.2k. And the rest is for the damage reduction and additional damage against races and the sizes. And lastly, I have the PvP Bulwark which is 25% and the PvP Fatality which is 10% coming from my Nebula Path. And next is I'm going to show you my statue. I have maxed out my statue from Duel to Conqueror. And next is I'm going to max out the Mist, Intimidation, Relic, Statues, prioritizing the PPP damage bonus. Another thing, my sigils, is I have the Surging Protection, the Flowing Shield, Silver Soul, Gate of Suffering, and the Primal 4. For the job sigil, I have the Perma Frost. So I'm working out on my other sigils that gives PvP damage reduction which is the swift breakout and the immortal body now next thing is for my weapons and armors for the headgear I'm using the reindeer band for the face wear I'm using the stylish glasses for the gray uh, for the mouth wear I'm using the gray mask for the armor I'm using the build of MOM and for the weapon, I'm using the Thanos Maelstrom build. And lastly, for the shield, I'm also using the Book of Lies. And for the accessories, I'm using the Orleans Glove and the Pendant of Harmony. Soon, the Orleans Glove will be replaced by the upcoming DA uh, accessories if it will be uh, available in the global. I hope it will. Then, we're going, I'm going to replace this with the DA accessories of the Pendant of Harmony. For the costume, I'm using the Bunny Sheriff for the additional skill damage. And this, uh, for the back uh, wear, I'm using the Tome of Snow for additional skill damage and the damage plus 5%. For the enchants, I'm using the Beacon for the headwear, the back wear, and the um, costume. For the face wear, I'm using the MDEF. And for the mouth wear, I'm also using the MDEF. For the armor, I'm using the Vitality Boost, level 5. For the shield, I'm using the Anti-P Damage, level 4. For the boots, I'm also using the Vitality Boost, level 5. And for, for cloak, as I'm using the Anti-Magic Damage, level 4. For the weapons, I'm using 
the Magic Boon Level 4. For accessories, the two accessories, I'm using the Magic Boon Level 4 as well. Now, for the build stats for the Divine Armament, let's start with the weapon. For the weapon, I'm using the PvP Damage Bonus, the Int, MATK, and MDEF. For the armor, I'm using the Max HP Percentage, Max HP Raw, VIT, and PvP Damage Reduction for Tenacity or Sustainability. For the cloak, I'm also using the Max HP Raw, MDEF, PvP damage reduction, and max HP 2.8%. For the shoes or boots, I'm using the stun resistance, the max HP raw, MSPD, and P damage reduction. For the shield, I'm using the max HP raw, P da uh, melee P damage reduction, M depth, and of course the max HP percentage. Now for the builds, you can also use the um, Goy B set if you want to be uh, uh, really tanky but if you want like my build the glass cannon you can also use the Maser of Magic for the shield you can also use the Valkyr just shield which gives you elemental resistance as well and for the glass cannon build you can also use for the uh, glass cannon build the Book of Lies now for the course for the Virus Core, since I am using the Fire and Wind skills, I am using the Elemental Inside Protocol, which gives me Wind, Earth, Water, and Fire attacks have a 15% chance to deal damage as if the target speed depth is associated with the countered stat. Now, for the Cores, you can also use the Manalent Boost, Blood Thirst, Holy Light Shield, and Core Overload. The Elemental Inside Protocol can only obtain via smell done and another thing the cards that i am using for the headwear is the deviruchi and gear for the facewear i'm using the goblin leader for the mouthwear i'm using the angel puppet one for the armor i'm using the pasana for the shield i'm using the tara frog card for the shoes or boots i'm using both varied cards for the cloak i'm using dustiness for wind resistance and Mars for water resistance, resistance since I am using a Pasana. For the accessories, I am using two raid cards. And for the another set of accessory, I am using the smoky card for hiding. Now, for the main weapon, I am using level 3 dark priest card and the hydra card. Now, for the dark priest card, it is um, very useful and the wizard or the warlocks can proc the dark priest card very well it's, uh, especially if you're using the tetra vortex and the spell uh, spell book you can easily proc the 20 percent um, mana drain or sp drain of the dark priest card and imagine if you're using this on pvp while using your tetra vortex in the spell book you can jeopardize or disrupt the enemy skill rotation for us to appreciate Here's a sample of, the, of a video that I am using and utilizing the Dark Beast card level 3.
As you can see, using the skills of the Warlock, especially the Chain Lightning, you can easily proc the 20% chance Drain SP of the Dark Priest card. And look at this, if you have the level 3 Dark Priest card, when attacking, there's a 20% chance of reducing the target SP by 15% of its max SP, up to 300 points for normal attacks, and up to 1,000 points for skill attacks. So imagine if you're spamming your Tetra Vortex and your spell book, and when the Dark Priest card procs on those spells or those skills, you will be disrupting the skill rotation of your target. And that's a really big deal in this meta. Why? Because most of the classes are using skills. So it's a really big help for your guild during DD, WoE, GL, or even Phantom Hunt to disrupt the enemy skill rotations. At the same time, if you're using the Dark Priest card, you can also proc an AOE SP Drain, but I need to verify it later on. Now, next thing is we're going to look for our, or going to check for our Nebula Path. My Nebula Path that I'm using is the Elementalist, and now it's level 76. For the Constellation, I am using the Steel Body level 5, Lupus level 5, and Major Tenacity level 5. For the red ones, I'm using the Draco level 2, Hydra level 5, Corvus level 5, and lastly, the Taurus level 5. Now for the yellow ones, I am using the Phoenix level 5. Whereas, upon taking elemental damage that is effective against your armor element, reduce damage effectiveness by 60%. Since I am using Pasana card, if they hit me with a water elemental converter or water uh, element skill, it will reduce the damage effectiveness by 60%. Plus, I am using the Cygnus level 5 which gives me elemental skill damage reduction plus 5% and also the Cancer level 5 which gives me elemental skill damage reduction Reduction plus five percent. Also, since I am using a Mars card, it will also give me water resistance twenty by twenty percent. Now going back to the Nebula Path, I'm also using the Fornax level five, Monoceros level five, Officius level five, and the Gemini level five. For the blue cons constellations, I'm using the the um, Origa level five. Aquilius level 5, Ursa Minor level 5, Ursa Major level 5, Virgo level 2, and Leo level 2. And lastly, for the green ones, I'm using the Crater level 2, Scotum level 5, Lepos level 5, Eridanus level 2, Canis Minor level 5, Canis Major level 5, and lastly is the Physis level 5. Now moving on to our Nexus engine. For my Nexus engine, I am prioritizing the red ones, yellow ones, and the lastly, the green ones. And the stats is PvP damage bonus and PvP damage reduction, and lastly, the max PvP ward. Now I'm going to emphasize here the um, sub skills that I am using. First, uh, induction, which is AO skill plus 2.5%, and also the duplicity which upon casting a movement skill, you inflict P def and M def minus 2% on enemies within 5 meters of you for 5 seconds. Since I am using the talent of teleport skill, if I use a teleport, it will grant me MSPD or movement speed plus 10%. Therefore, it will proc the duplicity sub skill. Plus, I am using also the Lucidity 2, whereas upon casting a movement skill, you gain magic damage 5% for 3 seconds. So that is a very effective sub-skill, especially when you are using or, or I am using or utilizing the teleport uh, talent skill that provides me 10% movement speed. For the uh, yellow ones, I also prioritize the um, sustainability, whereas uh, like the dedication, it gives me fortify. When upon taking damage a uh, from a debuff skill, I gain four stacks of fortify. And lastly, 
for the green ones, I always prioritize for the max PVP ward for sustainability for PVP build. And for the talents, I have the Elemental Orb plus 10, the Undaunted 1, Blazing Spark plus 10, Teleport plus 10, and lastly, the Sturdy, which is to be replaced by Valorus if I get it by next week. And next is for my medals. For my medals, I am using or prioritizing the Medal of Bravery for MATK and Medal of Wisdom M damage plus 15% to boost my skill damage. As you can see, I have level 40 heroism due to because once I am a paladin, then transferred to or job change to RK, then eventually job change to Warlock. For the Medal of Fate, I am prioritizing the Medal of Innocence for PvP damage bonus and PvP damage reduction since my character, I'm building my character for PvP. Another thing is my mount. The stats of my mount that I'm using is uh, Cloud Roaming which provides me max HP 1%, damage versus demi-human, and damage reduction versus demi-human. For the traits, I already max out the Brave and I'm on to maxing out next my cute, furious, lovely, and clever stats. And of course, um, next thing is my card albums or card decks. For my card decks, as of the moment, I am using the Minor Protection and I'm also using the Minor Prophecy. For my purple ones, I'm on my way to complete my major prophecy. And for the yellow ones, I'm on my way to complete my Mark of Galvig. And second to the last one, we're going to check my skill setups. For the mage skill setup, this is my skill, skill setup. For the wizard, here's my skill setup. For the High Wizard, this is also my skill setup. And lastly, for the Warlock, which is the third job, this is my skill setup. Whereas, I put 3 points on the Crimson Rock, 5 points on the Arc Lightning, and the 2 extra skill points, I put it on my on, on Teleport and 2 Soul Blast. Soul Blast is very important. As we are casting this one, it provides us additional elemental orbs. And I set my Crimson Rock and my Arc Lightning into zero skills prioritization. And next is, I tear up to level 10 my Comet, level 10 Ch Chain Lightning, and level 5 Tetra Vortex. So the Comet, Chain Lightning, and Tetra Vortex are set to prioritization or priority in the skills. And for my Reading Spell Book, I also level it to level 5 and it has a max skill prioritization for the inscribed spells i am using four chain lightnings as it will easily proc the dark priest card for the 20 percent chance sp drain and lastly here's my feather setup for the red feather setup i am using the time space day Fate and Sky tier. Now for the Dark Feather setup, I am using the Dark Light, um, Night, Terra, and Truth for the Dark Feather setup. I evenly spread the distribution of the Light and Dark uh, Feathers to the other categories of the Dark uh, Feathers. For me to easily tear it up one by one so there you go guys that is my warlock pvp build i hope that you learned a lot and i hope this video helps you improve your warlock when it comes to the pvp and of course don't forget to share this to your co-warlocks and to your guildmates as you guys prepare for the gls and the upcoming odin's cup now if you have any comments or suggestions on how can i improve more my warlock when it comes to the pvp please comment down below and lastly do not forget to like my video and subscribe to my channel for more informational videos and guides like this one so again thank you guys and have a good day 
GG's. This is the GG comment of the day.